uh, we are now able to bring you uh, some live pictures of uh, the UN General Assembly. We mentioned earlier they are preparing to vote on that uh, Israel-Palestinian crisis uh, very soon. That vote uh, on a non-binding resolution calling for a humanitarian truce. And it is Jordan that has proposed the resolution in the name of uh, 22 Arab countries. Well, our guest uh, uh, this evening is uh, Jossie Meckelberg, uh, who is uh, an associate fellow with the Middle East and uh, North Africa programme at Chatham House uh, Think Tank in London. He's here to uh, give us his thoughts on the uh, Middle East, the uh, Israel-Hamas war in the moment. Thank you so much for your time, uh, Mr. Meckelberg. Uh, maybe we could start uh, by asking, uh, first of all, do you think Israel can defeat uh, Hamas? Good evening. It depends how you define defeat. If they can militarily hit Hamas uh, very badly, reduce its military capabilities, yes, it can. It is, uh, it's, uh, military, its military is superior to Hamas and it can reduce its capabilities uh, considerably. Can it hit it politically? Actually, by by, by hitting so many civilians, it might achieve actually the opposite. The question is also if it can also defeat ideology. An ideology you can defeat only by presenting an alternative ideology that is more attractive, something. And for this, you need a political solution. So I think it depends how Israel is approaching it, the military approach, the political one, but also how you deprive Hamas of its support among the people because there is no uh, peace between Israel and Palestine because they live under occupation. And uh, uh, more and more uh, people are asking the question. Joe Biden was very clear when he spoke to Netanyahu. He said, it's one thing even if you do manage to militarily oust uh, Hamas from Gaza, Gaza. What is the plan for the next step? What uh, will replace it? And the options uh, uh, seem all uh, very complicated and uh, not likely to succeed. Could you run us through what might happen if, if, if Hamas leave Gaza? First of all, there has been general neglect of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict because people fell into this illusion that there is some status quo. There was never status quo because the situation has been deteriorating for a long time. And it was unsustainable. Not the occupation, not the blockade in Gaza. And it created a sense of despair. Of course, what Hamas did in the, the, the worst possible way, they committed atrocity that actually changed all the, 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 the equation in, in the relation between the Israelis and Palestinians. And as a result came this, this military response. But the military response itself is not, the, is not the answer. It might be a reaction and try to remove Hamas from being part of the political scene in, 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 in the region. But at the same time, the lack of planning, that's exactly the point, the lack of plan, how to move away from the conflict, to think about how you go back to ensuring that the political rights of everyone, the human rights of everyone, the civil rights of everyone, the idea that self-determination for Palestinians should stay on the agenda, not something that is pushed aside. And the idea of two-state solution is a mantra, but no one actually diplomatically for years now invested neither the political will nor the energy and anything and putting together a plan that can move away with the situation that prevailed until the 7th of October. But in terms of, of, of who would administer Gaza, I, I think the Israelis would say, well, well, you know, the Israeli military and the settlers pulled out in 2005. And yes, they have maintained a very strict blockade with the Egyptians and they have controlled who goes in and out of Gaza through the sea and, and uh, uh, through the, the, the border there. But, but in terms of administering uh, the strip, the Gaza Strip, who will do it uh, once Hamas have gone? And very many people outside wonder 
why it was uh, 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 that life was so bad under under Hamas. Why did they not manage to make any kind of success of uh, of running the Gaza Strip? Even though, of course, uh, there were very many restrictions put on what they could do. If we're gazing into the future beyond the war, so one, no one really want, wants to administer uh, Gaza. The Israeli left there in 2005, but we're in complete control. So there was occupation from the outside, unlike the West Bank, that is occupation from the inside. Egypt wouldn't like to go back there. And if the natural replacement for Hamas is the, is the PA, they can come on the back of the Israeli tanks and, and then, and then the Palestinians will see them as actually collaborated, the, the Gazan people is collaborated, collaborators, sorry, f f with the Israelis. So what remains is actually to build gradually an administration there, a through an international mechanisms that will run it in the aftermath of the war. Again, we're all assuming here that Hamas is going to be defeated and will be out of Gaza, which we, we, we can't be absolutely sure about that. But if this is the case, the United Nations should be... Let's not forget there is UNRWA, which is a UN agency that in charge of the Palestinian refugees, that has almost some sort of governing power because it deals with education, it deals with health, it deals with, with shelter. So to use this mechanism and gradually moving into that there will be a political governance led by the Palestinians. One of the, the conditions for but that who? is well, who? all the elections, for instance, that will provide legitimacy to whoever governed them. OK, well, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Meckelberg. I very, really appreciate uh, you taking time to uh, talk to us on a, on a Friday night. Thanks very much, uh, Yossi Meckelberg, uh, speaking to us from London.